Greetings family, peace and love to you and yours. This is Guru and thanks for visiting my channel. So over 1,000 African skulls in Berlin are a reminder of Europe's dark colonial history. Family, I'm going to go to this story. So first of all, family, before I get into the story, I just want you to know this picture right here is a picture of skulls of the Ova Herrero and the Nama people that were displayed during a service attended by representatives of the tribes from Namibia in Berlin, Germany in September 29, 2011. So family, this week the German public broadcaster ARD obtained information regarding the existence of thousands of human skulls and other remains of African people in the possession of the Prussian Cultural Heritage Foundation, which presides over state museums in Berlin. According to Dutch Well, ARD identified about 1,000 skulls that originated from what is now Rwanda and about 60 from Tanzania. Researchers and state officials will now work toward the repatriation of the remains. They were claimed at a time when both countries were part of the, the larger East German the larger German East Africa colony which existed from 1885 until the end of World War I. The existence of such a collection in European museums is both disturbing and not at all surprising. In the late 19th century as various competing colonial powers carved up large swaths of Africa and held sway over the islands of the Pacific Ocean, early anthropologists and western collectors made a hobby of hoarding the remains of indigenous people. So before I move on family this is no surprise to African black people because even during slavery we know that our ancestors were not only murdered but then their body parts were dismembered their bodies were dismembered and their body parts the men their penises were chopped off were cut off and they were displayed as ornaments from sick and demented beings these are beings of the lowest form of humanity that would do something like that but I digress I'll get back into the story in an era of scientific racism such artifacts if they can be considered that were in high demand European museums staged quote human zoos unquote where people from various indigenous communities in far-flung colonies would be put on display in invented habitats like caged animals. The bones and skulls and even embalmed heads of those from remote tribal cultures were objects of fascination and inquiry. A generation of eugenists Scientists developed theories of racial difference and superiority through the study of these objects. The hideous thinking behind such scholarship would find its most gruesome endpoint in the experiments of Nazi scientists during the Holocaust. And so family, before moving on from this point, I'd just like to say that yes, it was because of these type of things, these type of observations that Europeans developed the science of superiority. No one else had ever done that. The thousands and thousands and thousands of years of Africans' existence on the continent of Africa before a white man even saw a black man. Black people never developed a series of superiority or any kind of science of that matter for that they have created sciences sciences yes but not of racial superiority no racism and the concept of race 
developed, started and ended with Europeans. They're the ones and it was for their benefit. Nothing more, nothing less. And so yes, they developed a series of racial uh, superiorities such as the white man's skull and brain is larger than the black man's. Let me tell you something when you guys say that stupid analysis, when you have that dumb, ignorant comparison, it does not matter because even with all that big head that you guys have and that big giant brain that's supposed to be so superior, you guys are the lowest forms of thinking of man. You, the European man has every other man on the face of this earth thinking on the lowest level of frequency. This is something that the European concepts has created. Please replay this again so you can really understand what I'm saying. So, moving on. Some of the remains detailed in the Berlin collection are believed to belong to insurgents killed by German troops during various colonial wars. Their schools, like those belonging to other African Africans fighting other colonial forces were sent back to the imperial capital for analysis. In many other incidents, unscrupulous bounty hunters would simply kill or exhume bodies of indigenous people to sell off to eager European collectors. So before we move on from that point, basically what that's saying is that yes, there was a supply and demand and the demand came from Europeans who were sick enough to want to buy indigenous people's human remains. Absolutely insane. And they had the nerve to make a mockery of Michael Jackson with rumors, rumors mind you, because it was not true that he collected the elephant man and you guys made a mockery of it, of it but your culture is filled with this type of sickness but see you guys never reported it that way but let me just remind you of the comparison so moving on in recent decades the discovery and tussle over the rep repatriation of such remains has led to diplomatic incidents and awkward concessions from Western governments and museums. In 2000, a museum in Spain finally sent back to Botswana a whole stuffed African man from the Kalahari Desert whose body had fallen into the hands of French taxidermists in the 1830s. In the past five years alone, according to Dutch Well, Germany has returned human remains found in its museums to former colony, colony Namibia and to Australia and Paraguay. In 2012, France finally sent back to New Zealand 20 mummified tattooed heads of Maori warriors which European sailors in the 18th and 19th centuries coveted as valuable prizes to sell back home. So family, we close a terrible chapter of colonial history and we open a new chapter of friendship and mutual respect, declared then French cultural minister Frédéric Mitterrand. So family, a popular arts blog offered a fairly thorough roundup last year, which include numerous American museums as well. To sum up all the recent returns would be a harrowing litany. To cite a few, last year the Field Museum in Chicago returned the remains of three Tasmanian Aboriginal people. 
In 2011, the Natural History Museum in London returned the skeletal remains of 138 people to the Torres Strait Islanders in Australia. And in 2008, the remains of 180 people from a bulldozed ancient mound were returned to the Onondaga Nation by the New York State Museum. In 2013, the remains of Julia Pastrana held at the University of Oslo were finally buried. Pastrana was exhibited as a human freak in the 19th century due to her hypertrichosis terminal, terminalis condition that covered her face and hair. Her mummified body was toured after her death and traded hands as an oddity. In 2002, the remains of Sarah Bartman were interred in South Africa after being on display for decades at the Museum of Man in Paris. Like Bastrana, Bartman had been exhibited as a 19th century spectacle during her lifetime, labeled the, quote, Hottentot Venus, unquote, for her reportedly round buttocks and elongated genitalia. And family, this would be a picture of the Hottentot Venus. And as you can see, this woman, it resembles most all black women with these attributes of the large buttocks that is oh so beautiful to all of mankind. It's the natural attributes of black women. And if any woman would be considered that of a Venus, it would surely be that of a black woman. But I digress. We'll get back into the story. So family, lastly, following the ARD report, Rwanda's ambassador to Germany called for the swift return of these remains to their country of origin. A Tanzanian commentator on Dutch Wells' Kiswahili website spoke of the larger sense of grievance and outrage felt by many in the former colonial world. Quote, I am so hurt by what was done to our ancestors, unquote, the commentator said. So family, that's the extent of this vlog. I hope you gained something as I did. I had no idea that so many human remains, number one, were being still held captive in European countries, namely in their museums, and that two, there were already efforts by the native countries to have these remains returned. And for one reason or another, uh, those efforts were stalled. And so I'm glad that the efforts have been uh, once again uh, made forth an effort to get them returned because I think it's, it is disturbing for these European museums to just be displaying uh, other people's ancestors in their museums uh, in cages basically on display. So um, I think if Europeans want to have uh, these type of things on display I think they should use their own. Go dig up um, um, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson Andrew Jackson, uh, Andrew, you know, Adam, uh, all of them. Just go, go dig them all up. Nixon, uh, Reagan, go dig them up and don't, then go put them in some museums. I would like to see that. I might even pay to go see it. So, family, I just want to say moving on. I did go see a museum with some family and friends uh, back in the late 2000 we went to uh to the museum it was the display exhibition called the body works and it was where they had displayed human remains and the reason for this exhibit was to show uh the different um the benefits uh, some of the benefits of being able to know the human body our tissue it showed it even showed the effects of our lungs after you've been smoking for a while versus those 
who don't smoke and, and so on and so forth. So it was certainly a learning uh, exhibit, uh, exhibit, but it was, it was still disturbing also. Um, it was an interesting experience. It was my first time going to something like that. So yes, that was an interesting experience, but at the same time, looking back in hindsight and looking at it from through a different lens, I can see how it's really odd that Europeans uh, get off on this kind of thing. So with that said, like I said, lastly, uh, right before this, is that I think they should go to the cemeteries, go dig up Ronald Reagan, uh, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and all those guys, and then go put them on display and see how Europeans like that. So anyway, family, I hope you like this video. Please like, share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. This is Guru. Peace and love to you and yours, and until the next video, take care.